Amsterdam. Once every year, it's not only known as the capital city of the Netherlands with its lovely old buildings and canals, but then it becomes the capital of the world of dance music. The whole world of dance music gathers together in Amsterdam during the ADE event. And to be honest, I'm not going to the big parties the ADE is known for. No, I'm going to the little street well, over there for a very special side event. I'm standing here in the Ness Street, uh, a little street behind at Rokin. And over here are different venues where the ADE Lab event is being organized. There are different things to do. You can pitch your demos to record companies. There are workshops, there's a small trade fair. And to be honest, I've never been here before. So I want to take you along and check out what's happening over here. Because for me, and I think also since most of my viewers are artists and musicians, um, Let's check out what's interesting here for us. Oh, and before I forget it, um, this video isn't sponsored by anybody. Um, so if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up below and maybe subscribe to my channel. And if you want to see more of my content and help me create better content, then please go to my website, subscribe to my mail list, and then you can get my free guide to musical creativity for free or you can buy one of my other guides uh, one about synthesizers and since you are watching something about ade you might be interested in synthesizers or the one about spicing up your chords so you can make more harmonious and better music and you can pick them up on my website and now let's go inside so i'm here with my friend noe from aturia i really like aturia as you might know um, and he's going to take us quickly through the three main new products of this year, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah, so really happy to be here at ADE, I'm meeting a lot of friends, a lot of people that come try the instruments, it's actually big cues to try the instruments, so we're really, really, really happy to see that. Um, so the main three instruments we're presenting here are the first, the Keylab Mark III right here, which is a MIDI controller and has a really, really, really nice key bed that you really have to try. If you can try it in stores, it's the best thing. I can confirm it, I just tried it and I really loved it, how it felt and how it worked and it's a really, really great key bed. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, it's true, it's a, it's a great key bed. Uh, then we've got the Astrolab, which is our new, and a matter of fact, our first stage keyboard that people are lining up to try and uh, yeah, at least I can say is that everybody loves it so far, so that's great. I can confirm I just tried it. I hope I can get a demo model somewhere so to try it really at home. But yep. uh, do we talk to you to Carlos about it? <laughs> Carlos would be Carlos. better. <laughs> Carlos, if you're watching it, uh, you got my address, please send me one. <laughs> and uh, then the latest instrument we have is the Polybird 12, which is our new 12 voice polyphonic analog synth. And people have eyes go like this when they try it and yeah it's a pleasure to see that yeah also a great big I must say a little bit too complicated for me at this moment I couldn't be honest because I tried it I was like okay how can you put a lot of knobs but yeah. I think if you really know what you're doing with it it's it's, it's a heaven thing yeah you need a little time to get used to it but uh, once you're there it's yeah it's just pure joy yeah I can't I, I think I can confirm that in the future if I try also Carlos uh, <laughs> <laughs> Noah said I could have one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know. Thank you very much, and hope to see you uh, soon again. <laughs> Thank you. Standing to the great Gary, Gary Chandler. <laughs> I must say, the house is packed. Uh, with love, respect, and admiration. Always. And how did you do the? Um, did you like the, the demo today? Because you are the one of the first people who could try the uh, Astral up. Yeah, they, they have me on the team kind of doing beta testing and I'm having fun with it. And, you know, anytime something happens with it, I kind of talk to them and ask them to add stuff and change stuff and we'll go through the firmware together. And, yeah, so for me, it's, it's, um, it's, it's like a growing process with the both of us. 
Yeah. That was great. And for the people who might not know you, yeah. could you tell a little bit about uh, what kind of music you make? I make uh, deep house music. <laughs> um, it's just, it comes from my heart. I, I haven't changed anything. My songs are like stories of my life, really. That's all they really are. And I'm just, this is my way of expressing it. And I'm just hoping that people enjoy what I make. And how do, does the Astrolab help you with this? Oh, I can take all my sounds from the mm -hmm. studio. And I can actually just bring them out and play them anywhere I am. Because normally I have a keyboard with me um, when I'm out live and I can play over my tracks and things. So this way I can bring the exact sounds I use from the studio and put them in the keyboard. And okay. I don't have to bring the actual keyboard. I can have written one or they can have it there and I can go on my phone and go, my sounds are in that keyboard now. Yeah. yeah, that sounds really convenient because that was always for me one of the biggest problems. Like, okay, VST, great, but then you want to play live, you have to take all your laptops no, and that. the thing. You don't, it's, this is the hardware version of it. And it's like I said, it's rock solid though. And like, I mean, all my patches and everything, all my little tweaks and my special presets and things, they're, they're on my phone. And I don't have to worry about, oh my God, I got to sit here and program this thing. Oh, maybe I can find it in here. No, that's exactly what I would have at the studio, what I, what I use for most of my songs. Okay. And this is your first time at the Eddie? No, no, I've been here for years. <laughs> yeah. Do you like this year? Um, I just flew in, so I, I'm trying to feel it all out and see what's going on. And well, to be the, the, the honest question for me is the first time. Oh, um, what would you advise to people who are coming over to a uh, ADE for the first time? What would you time it. <laughs> time it? Time everything the best you can to get to everything you want to see. And pace yourself. You're going to need at least a good week. You're not going to see everything, so don't even try to do that. But try to see this, the main stuff you want to see. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much and uh, have a pleasant day. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, I'm now at the Ableton booth with Jean Paul, and he's gonna take us quickly to what's new this year, or especially, I think, last week. Yeah, last week, uh, October 8th, we uh, we launched Move, Ableton Move, which is this smaller controller that we have here. It's not actually just a controller; it's also uh, a standalone device, instrument, sampler, anything, really. It's more like a slimmed down version of Push 3, which is also standalone. Um, but it can do much of the same things, but uh, I guess just with more limitations, which, you know, uh, um, expects creativity or evokes creativity. Yeah, I would say. This I just want to say it sparks creativity. The lim limitations yeah, yeah. spark creativity. Yeah, that's kind of the, um, yeah, that's what I would say at least, yeah, about it. And I really like playing it. I've had it for about a month just to, you know, get it to know it myself as well. You lucky bastard. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I had to be here and help these people out sometimes. So, uh, uh, but no, it, I really enjoyed playing with it. I, I showed it to a couple of other people who, who work with Ableton and they could click really fast with it. like. Um, there's a little booklet with it that just shows like what all the buttons do. You just put it right above the move and then it's very easy to get started. I had like 10, 15 minutes and people get it. And I guess that's the point, that it's quick, fun, and yeah, it fits into your workflow, right? You upload it to the cloud and you can continue in, uh, in Ableton Live, right? So. And just a quick question, can you also, if you already got the, like an ex extensive, extensive, extensive <laughs> Ableton, Library with sounds, can you also load them onto the uh, Move? Yeah, yeah. Um, they come with a quite a, a large sound library already with lots of presets. Uh, you can make your own presets in live, but they have to follow a very specific format. So, um, for example, Move can only have two effects per track, and it's also uh, a few specific effects that you can only choose from. So, as long as you follow that format and you can find that in the manual of Move on how to do that, then you can save those presets and then move them over to Move. And then, uh, uh, yeah, you'll be able to use it in, in its standalone mode, yeah. Did we just invent a new marketing phrase, Move to Move? If I what, sorry? A new marketing phrase, Move to Move? Move to Move. <laughs> move it Move? Yeah, 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 maybe, perhaps. But um, it's also a nice controller, so it, it doubles as a controller. It's not just a standalone instrument, it's also a, a controller for Ableton Live 12.1, which also dropped last week, by the way, uh, which is great because it has an auto shift plugin, uh, which is, yeah, great for if you want to tune your vocals or uh, play your vocals with MIDI. So it's not just automatic tuning, but it's really also depending on uh, incoming MIDI notes if you want it to be. 
Uh, well, I think that's a really great plugin and uh, really worth checking out. Uh, um, if you're not that interested in Move or controllers, then well, 12.1 has uh, had some good stuff as well. Well, Jean-Paul, thank you very much. And when did I got one in my email again, my mailbox? Uh, well, if Maurits, keep, keep <laughs> listen to what he says. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> keep emailing, keep emailing, <laughs> keep trying. <laughs> Inside AdjustNet, Job and he is also visiting the ADA. And why are you visiting here? Uh, so I'm here with my uh, study. I uh, study at the Conservatory Artes in Enschede. And uh, with our school, we are visiting Adi uh, this year, uh, just like last year, to uh, network and uh, to go to the, visit the panels and uh, just have fun as well. So, yeah, it's very nice. So you're here all the way from Enschede? Yes, I'm here all the way from Enschede. But I, I sleep in Amersfoort, so I don't have to go back and forth every day at least. But uh, yeah, we're all here from all the way from Enschede, yeah. Great. And what was the most interesting thing you have seen or done this year? Um, so on Wednesday there was uh, Buma Music in Motion the whole day and uh, as I'm a composer for film and game uh, that was very interesting because well, the whole day was uh, made for composers and there were a lot of music supervisors and sync, uh, sync licensings and uh, just every panel was about composing so there was like a, a panel about trailer music which I very much like because uh, I make a lot of trailer music so definitely the whole Wednesday Be My Music in Motion program was very interesting and with uh, finishing with the um, networking drinks where I spoke to a lot of interesting people so yeah definitely like the, basically the whole Wednesday was very very nice. So you're actually telling me I'm the wrong day here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if you're a composer. Man. That was like, if you make electronic music, like uh, EDM stuff, then that wasn't really uh, your kind of thing. But the rest of ADE was, is, is for like EDM things and uh, electronic music. And that was like specifically not for electronic music, but for composing and well, still maybe like a bit of hybrid uh, electronic things. But um, yeah, for me, that was very interesting because it just stood out from the rest of the things this week. So yeah. yeah I'm also more like the ambient stuff and making background videos for this kind of stuff and my yes. normal documentaries I create. So actually, I should be, next year I have to go on the Wednesday if it's again. Yeah, well, if it's next year again, I, I'm not sure. But yeah, you should you should definitely go. To, you just uh, should check out Buma, Buma Music in Motion. It's just an Instagram account and they do more events through the year and you can have like one-on-one uh, -on -one matchmakings with like professionals from uh, like, well, anything basically like creative agencies or sync libraries or well, anything with well um, ambient music as well. So yeah, that could be very interesting, I think. And then the last question, if people are like interested, like, hey, Job, we want to have this guy, uh, where can they find you? Uh, well, you can... <laughs> Shameless plug time, you can go on. <laughs> well, I have a company called Figure 8 Audio where we do uh, audio for like um, uh, short films, documentaries, uh, adverts, anything. And we can provide all the audio. So we do music, sound design, voiceovers, mixing. So you don't have, you only have to come to us. So yeah, you can check us out at Figure 8 Audio. But uh, yeah, <laughs> that's it. We drop a link down below or something. <laughs> hey, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Was it you with your drive? Now I'm standing here with Chris from Novation, and they got the Lounsky Mark. This is the Mark IV. The Mark IV. Yeah, for sure. I just told your colleague I started out with the SL Mark I. Oh, nice. Old yes. school. Yeah, old school. But <laughs> That's when we started. Controller. A really lovely controller. I always thought of that as like the Porsche of controllers, you know. <laughs> but yeah, so we're here with the new launch key, um, and I can give you a quick, uh, a quick explanation about it. So it's the fourth generation. There's a lot of new creative features that have gone into this. Um, we have six models in the range. This is the four octave version. This is the 49 note. Um, and the 49 note and the 61 note have a new key mechanism. So we've got a semi-weighted keyboard. So it's got a really nice feel to it. Um, there are others in the range as well. We have a 37 note and a 25 note. That's with full-size keys. And then we have two minis as well. We've got a 25 note and a brand new 37 note in the minis. So we've extended that range out. Um, and I think the 37 note mini is really, going to be a really popular one because it's small, but it's still got three octaves to play with. And all of the creative features are shared across all of them. So in terms of creative features, we've really worked hard. We've got things like fixed chords. So I can press a fixed chord, press a few notes, and now 
now on each key I have that chord fixed so it's like a nice old school house kind of way of making music we've also got user chords as well and I can build up my own bank of chords here um, and these are features that we had on the third generation as well but they're still existing on this one but the new thing and I think this is one of the most exciting things for me is the chord map now the chord map gives you eight chords initially and then we have different levels of exploration and adventure. So we can start off with some quite basic chords, and as we move up the five adventure levels, we can go into new areas, new tonalities, new harmonies. And then we've also got exploration as well, and we have eight levels of exploration. So this means for each scale, we've got 40 different banks of eight chords. It's a huge amount. And these are really great for, you know, for maybe a bit of inspiration, just finding some new sounds, some new harmonies. They're really, really nice to work with. I mean, I don't want to sound too big-headed here, but I studied music. I did, you know, I did a degree in music, but I'm finding that the chords that this is giving me is really kind of adding to my vocabulary. It's making, yeah, making me go into areas that I wouldn't normally do. So that's the chord map. We've also got the scale mode as well. So we can put the keyboard into a specific scale mode. And we, we've got 30, uh, I think it's, some, oh, it's over 30 scales to choose from here. Um, so we can just dial that in using the, uh, the, the pads here. Um, and we've got different ways of working. Normally we can snap the notes. So if a note isn't in the scale, it will play the nearest correct note. But we've got different modes here as well. We can filter notes out of the scale so they won't play. And then a really nice one is the easy scale. So it'll take the scale and it'll just put it onto the white notes for you. So, you know, you don't have to worry about the black notes. <laughs> so if you're not a great keyboard player, but you still want to be able to play nice melodies and stay in key, it's all in there for you. So that's the scale mode. And then finally, we've got the arpeggiator um, on here as well. And the arpeggiator is an interesting one because basically, if I just press a note here, you can see it's running across. And I basically got it, I'll just clear these out and just explain a little bit about what we've go, got going on. This is the arpeggiator. We've, I can latch this on. Uh, so there we go. Oh, it was latched on. Okay, let's do that again. There we go. It's latched on and I can take steps out of the arpeggiator. So I can build rhythms with that. I've got my usual controls like speed and swing and all the kind of normal things that you would have. But this second row here gives me other interesting things like ties. So a tie will join this note to the next note, so you can get longer notes in the arpeggiator sequence. We've got accents as well, so I can just bring an accent out for a note. And we've got a thing called ratchet, which will double the note on that step. So a very creative arpeggiator. So those are the functions that are built into the keyboard. So you've got a lot of great stuff you can do. So this, this is plugged into a computer at the minute, but I could take the MIDI output, connect it to a hardware synth, and still benefit from all of these nice things. And then, of course, we go into controlling DAWs. Now, here we've got Ableton Live, but this will work in the same kind of level of, 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 of depth with Logic and Cubase. We're working really hard to add all, all the uh, DAWs to the list for, um, for control with the launch key. Uh, with Ableton Live, I think it's really interesting as well. So I can, on the screen here, which you won't be able to see in the video, but I can move around, get to a track, and in normal uh, settings, I can use the, uh, the pads here to launch clips and trigger clips. But we've added a new mode in for Ableton, where if I go into the second door page, now I can choose a note. So again, we, we can't hear this, but this is the kick drum in an 808 set. I can press that note and select it, and now I can add notes in as a sequence directly on here. So there's a kick drum. Let's say I want a snare. So I press the next note and I add a snare in. If I want some hi-hats, I can just add that in. So I've got a very deep level of control over the sequencer directly within Ableton. Of course, we've got our faders here as well, so I can use this to balance all the different um, levels. We've got the encoders here. This is new. Before they were pots, so they would stop. Now they're encoders, which means that when we're working with software, there's no pop pickup required. It's just immediately going to take control of the thing that you're controlling without any worries. And I can go into the plug-in mode here, and now you can, on the screen again, you won't be able to see it on the camera, but on the screen here, I'm just controlling the various different parameters without having to map them, without having to go through a setup process or anything. It's all just there working for you. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things in here. This has been a very, very quick... Uh, a top line <laughs> level uh, uh, explanation, but it's a very powerful controller keyboard. Um, yeah, and it's just a really helpful and useful piece of kit. So, yeah, it yeah. looks really great. 
Yeah, thanks, yeah. That's it the launch key. It feels nice. Yeah, it feels nice. It's really well built. Um, and it's, yeah, I mean, it, it's... I think it punches above its weight when it comes to price. I think, you know, it's... It, how much get, are, are, are the 49 version? So, yeah, I mean, the best thing to do is to go and check with your local dealers, but, they, you know, they're, they're inexpensive. These are our, you know, our kind of entry point into controllers. So, you know, the price is, is a really nice price. I can't remember exactly offhand what, they, uh, uh, what the Euro's price is, but they're certainly not... It's not scary pricing for these things, so yeah. it's good. Yeah. They're really affordable. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay. Well, Chris, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. Cheers. You know, and um, there were a lot of people, um, you know, it's quite easy to do a little race in Amsterdam, but the police are also aware, you know, so it's so quite easy to do a little race. I just met Nick yesterday, I'm going to be honest, I met him yesterday, and yes, I'm filming this video in two days, so it's not one day, just two days, same clothes and stuff, but um, he told me about Splice, and I must be honest, I didn't know about Splice, but Nick... You're going to take everybody who also know those Splice to what is Splice. So Splice is the world's best sounds library. It's a, wor a royalty-free sounds library where you can use all the samples in your production, release it out into the world, and not have to sweat about clearances or paying anybody else to release that work. Uh, we also have presets. We have plugins on our rent-to-own platform. So we have tools for producers. We even offer digital audio workstations on our platform. So you really have everything you need to get started. And it's a low monthly subscription. Yeah, so the price is $12.99 for the starting plan. And we have plans above that if you need more. Um, and one of the best features we're here uh, showing is that Splice is now integrated into the digital audio workstation. We are now inside of Studio One. This means that Splice is closer to the producer's workflow and it unlocks a first of its kind feature that has never been seen before. So you can now scan your arrangement, have Splice reference that audio and then serve you compatible samples on the side that will work with your arrangement. It's the most musical way to find sounds. It takes you deeper into the flow state and it will change the way producers find sounds. So if I understand correctly, it listens to what you're already creating and then it shows the sounds or what will fit with around you what you're creating. Exactly. But that sounds great. Yes, yeah, yeah. And that's uh it's gonna go be able to do it in the DAW, it's like a plugin, or just upload to the, to the uh, Splice website and then it makes selection for you? Uh, well, you asked the hard questions, my sir, but we will. We definitely hope to have it available for all producers. So whether that be plug-in form or more integrations with other DAWs, uh, stay tuned. Let's stay tuned for that because I think that would be really great if you just see in your DAW, okay, I need something with this and then Flop day! Absolutely, you see the vision, I, I think you do, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much, we're gonna take a look at it and uh, check it out near the future and hope to see you again next year. Thank you so much for uh, talking to me and I hope you all have a great day. Okay, you're welcome, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. If you do one little step forward. Forward, yeah. 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 And maybe I'm gonna stand over here and you are, yes. because you are a bit shorter, so now you're closer to the camera. So oh, now it looks like we're the same. The same height, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the world of making videos. <laughs> now I'm at the booth of TSO, if I'm correct, please. Torso Electronics. Torso Electronics. Oh, I'm sorry. Torso Electronics with Jacob, and they got a device which I think is really, really interesting for everybody into well, maybe, maybe one part DJing, but if you want like ambient stuff and experimental stuff, it's called a sculpting sampler. So, Jacob, can you? Take us quickly through what it is. Yeah, so we call it a sculpting sampler. It's uh, it's a four-track uh, sampling device, um, which fits into a lot of different use cases. Uh, it defaults to having four tapes. You load in samples, you play those back. Uh, we have the interesting thing about it is a very uh, experimental and creative uh, device chain of different ways of processing your sound. So we have a granular engine. Uh, we have a uh, filtering section with like uh, where you can make cool resonant stuff and we have like some nice uh, coloring effects distortion compression and lastly of course reverb delays to to bind it all together and uh, and yeah so we have different ways of using it as i said it loads up into tape so if you load in a sample all that stuff you can also switch to poly we call it which you can plug in a uh, usb uh, midi keyboard Play it like that as an eight-voice uh, synth synthesizer sampler, uh, or sequence it through your DAW. 
stuff like that. Uh, or you can bypass that and uh, process external audio. Uh, so we have line inputs where you can yeah, plug in whatever you want, right? Um, and yeah, the four tracks means that you can do any configuration you want. So maybe you want two tape loops running, um, and then on the other two tracks have uh, like a synth, synth voice going. Uh, so it's really flexible, both in like the studio or for live situations. Uh. Hi, sorry, this is me from the future, and I just want to clear something up. Um, something that I've learned these days is that it is really hard to focus on an interview while the creative part of your mind is going like, ooh, I want to do stuff with that. Beep, 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 blah, 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 thinking around. So if we look a little bit off sometimes, that's the reason why. Now let's go back. Yeah. So you can be like, uh, maybe have like a drum and a background loop on one of channel one and channel two, then play around with your keyboard and maybe add the guitar or a vocal mic and process it all through it and then Exactly, yeah. And the tape device also functions as a looper, so you can do recording and overdubbing right in, in the device, right? Um, we also have an internal sense system, so you can make sense for effects and uh, have stuff feed into each other and go totally crazy. Totally yeah. crazy. Yeah. And also you like sync in and out, so you can combine it with all your external gear and have it all synced up. Yeah, exactly. We have uh, analog sync and, and, uh, and media as well. And with uh, the looper, always an important question for me because I'm not always fast enough with like pushing buttons. I can even program like, okay, I just want to have a four bar loop and then it automatically keeps creating four bar loops. Yes, yes, it does that. Super simple, very like, it's a very important thing for us to have like parameters that make sense. So there's a big design process in, in, in how we, uh, what parameters we expose to, to our users because we want it to be fast and fun and exciting and, and not that whole programming mindset, you know, opening up the piano roll, putting in the notes. We, we're not so interested in that. We, we want to give options to, the, to our users and, and, and have fun and start creating quickly. That's kind of the, the vibe we're going for, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I said just in a talk we had before, um, I would love to test it someday in the studio if possible. So I hope your colleague is friendly enough, especially after watching this video, if we can't speak right now, then <laughs> please hug up with me because I really would love to give the spin in the studio and really dive into it because I think it's just really creative and interesting. Uh, yeah, we think so. We think so. Yeah. And for everybody who is like, well, I want to try it. I want to have it. Uh, where can I find you? So yeah, you can uh, go on, uh, find us on Instagram, Torso Electronics. You can find our websites. Um, we're out of stock right now. December, January, we'll be having new new shipments coming in. Uh, you can also check out our sequencer. Uh, we released that a couple of years ago, our generative sequencer. A generative uh, sequencer? Wait, wait, wait. Generative is like ambient audio generative stuff? Ultimately? No, a, a rather algorithmic sequencer, we call it. Yeah, so, it's, so it's, uh, it has like Euclidean uh, sequencing and cool ways of uh, uh, creating melodies by turning knobs. And so again, uh, back to the piano roll, less about that whole plugging in stuff and more about turning knobs, uh, creative uh, parameters that give you interesting musical results. Uh, Freaking out, making happy accidents. Exactly, exactly, yeah also sounds really interesting, I must be honest. Yeah. So please check out them on the website and uh, hopefully I can make somewhere next year a complete video about it because I'm getting excited. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm here at the boot of Victorian and I will be honest, I have never DJed really in my life. I know when I was like eight years old, my brother had a Turntable was like rent and the Technics turntable. Okay. That was the brand. That, that was what you had. Sometimes play with, but I suck. But I was a kid for five years or so. But you feel really tough being able to do it. But nowadays, there's Hercules. I understand. Yeah. Told me. Could you take us to what is a Hercules? So yes, Hercules makes DJ controllers in 2003, and our goal is always to make uh, DJ controllers for beginners, but uh, affordable, but also with uh, solutions to learn online with our DJ Academy. So we are really teaching at really low, low, low level. Like if you ne don't know what you can, you must do as a DJ as your job, we explain everything. Also in a technical side, but also in a theory side. And uh, you were talking about the Technics turntables. That's uh, pretty funny because on this product we have launched uh, last year, 
It's called the T7, so T for turntable, S7 for 7 inch. And the goal on this product was to make a real turntable with a real slip mat and a real disc you put on it. So it's a mix of a DJ controller, like people are more used to use, but with motorized platter, so you can really feel the vinyl sensations. Because nowadays, we know there is a lot of DJs using CDJs and professional world, but some of them, they aspire to know how to mix on true vinyls, and it's so difficult to mix on true vinyls. Instead like of like something. putting the uh, USB... <laughs> Two point play, play. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not maybe not as much, but yes, it's more easy to mix on uh, digital side. And with this one, we wanted to mix the analog roots of DJing and the digital side. And yes, that's what we are making uh, at Hercules. Uh, one of the things is uh, digital core and analog roots. So yes, that's what we have made with this product. And yes, we are making really affordable products under 100 euros for really, really beginners that you can buy as a gift. And this one for the premium edition of the T7, it's 700 euros. So it's not so expensive, but a good one. Still and affordable, but yeah. you, you get some quality for it. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for showing it. Yeah. No <laughs> That's so Maybe I will gonna try it someday if I <laughs> feel ready for it to. Yeah. In fact, it's really pretty easy. We are putting some assistance, well, we call it on the product. So it's not uh, mixing at for you, it's, make, it's uh, helping you. So in fact, we have something we call beat match guides that will allow you to learn to beat match because beat matching is the first technique you need to know as a DJ to recognize the rhythm between the song, which one is lower, which one is higher. So we have guides straight on the controllers telling you you are faster than this one, etc. And also, on, not on Serato software, but on our software called Juice, we have an AI assistant that suggests you the best song you should play after the one you are playing based on AI recommendation like the key, tonality, rhythm, danceability. But you choose between all this. It's not you should play this one. You choose one and it's pretty great because it works for beginners. And when, when you are more expert, it's like kind of a security of everything. Oh, if I'm in the rail with the beat line, maybe I'm not good or, or I need to find new ideas with the AI. So yes, that was the goal we want to make. Just growing up the people in their digging habits. So you can slightly turn down the uh, training wheels. Yeah, that's it, that's it, <laughs> absolutely. And you can just load in your own music and samples and stuff, or...? Uh... Uh, uh, in fact, or on, uh, at Hercules, if you are really, really beginner and you don't know ever how to find music, we are providing a copyright copyright free music you can download on our website in different uh, genre of music to train yourself and also sample packs uh, for your DJ if you don't know how to edit a sample and make a, a horn sound or something like this when you are really a beginner it's something you like for, for the fun stuff and then you we are on the DJ software we are also working with SunCloud with Beatport, BitSource and Tidal so if you have a, one of these uh, subscriptions, you can stream the song from this service into the DJ software. So it can be a solution when you don't know or you don't have the money to buy music. It's a good uh, solution for you. That's the biggest problem for musicians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Victorian, thank you very much. Uh, no problem. And uh, see you around. See you. Bye-bye. I'm standing with another first-timer. Aku, if I pronounced right? Yeah, Aku. And where are you from? Uh, Finland. Finland. Yeah. And it's also your first time here. How do you like it? Yeah, I I, I like it really well. Uh, I feel like I'm I'm home here. It's I feel like this is my my people and and I'm more passionate, like most passionate passionate in life about this uh, like electronic music and what what this is all about. Are you also a producer? Yeah, I am. Like starring. Starting producer. Yeah, yeah. And what's the greatest thing you have seen until now? Uh, well, I was just in. Uh, there was a couple of like uh, interviews and like master classes from uh, Armada label artists. That was really good. And uh, also last night I was at the uh, Stamp Records label night, which is like Martin Garrix uh, label, and uh, he's like my favorite artist. So that was also. Really cool. So can we see you next year? Yeah, definitely. If I'm able to do this, yeah, absolutely.
And are you starting? Is there already somewhere that people could check out your music? Yeah, I have like uh, one song in SoundCloud. And what's the name of the song? Uh, the name of the song is Inception. Inception. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much and enjoy yourself uh, today. Thank you. Now I'm here at the booth of DJ Um I never heard about them, but as I already explained, I don't know anything about DJing. But Patrick over here just told me about DJ Hort. It sounds really interesting. So, Patrick, could you also take our nice viewers at home to what is DJ Yes, Yeah, sure. I will can give you a quick overview. So, DJ is a music creation platform mostly for DJs. So, the main idea is a lot of DJs I also talk today, like have a bunch, thousands of tracks and to have, get track of them all the time and to be aware of what tracks you have, it's quite impossible. But that's why we created a platform where you can have a better overview about your tracks. And even we will support in creating your new playlist. For example, if you create something, you have a gig tomorrow and you want to have a playlist, then we just like starting with some tracks and then we can give you recommendations. So we won't take the work of you away from really pre-listen the tracks and everything, but we will help you and support you in finding your perfect playlist for the night. So there's still the human element, but it's just like an helping, like, okay, we got, we like these songs. And it's also, well, I could imagine that when you are like playing on the evening and you need to change something around, it can give you like some extra option, like, hey, maybe you should this song or that song or something like this. So no, we are not focusing on uh, playing or being like a play station at the, where you play the music at the night. So it's just like, preparing things so you prepare the sets and then you can play them in the club so that's the main idea it's like the creation so we're not like a um, dj playlist player okay so you just uh, output like a list like okay these songs could work and then you know which songs to pick and then you do that in your djing software if do it yeah exactly it will gives you some folders and then you have like a prepared set even it helps you mix harmonically because we have we are analyzing the tracks and then you have like uh, the key the BPM, the danceability, and also track of emotion and the energy of the track. So in the end, like all these information will put together and helping then creating your the perfect playlist for the night. Okay, and if people want to learn more about DJ Hort and can't go to the ADE lab today because I will post it like tomorrow this video. So. If they can't hurry up enough to go here and learn more about, where can they find more about DJI? Yeah, you just go on DJI.io. On the website, we have all informations. And uh, during ADE, we have also a discount from the, for the software. But this is everything online. You can check it out. OK, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. So for everybody who is like more into like modular synthesizer stuff, but maybe also would like to become a DJ, or is like a DJ and if he needs a mixing desk, but never could find the one doing all his wishes, let's put it that way. Um, Jasper over here from Manura, they got a great solution. And Jasper, could you take us quickly through it? Sure. Um, yeah, we've designed a modular DJ mixer, so you can personalize, personalize it and uh, basically build your own DJ mixer. So we want to address uh, the people who didn't really find the perfect DJ mixer for them but also music producers who are into like hybrid setup, live setup, and uh, like combine it with a DJ setup. And our concept is that we have uh, 22 modules right now you can choose from and basically build your own DJ mixer or hybrid mixer or whatever you like. So we have um, a big range of modules. Um, for example, different input modules like um, normal phone and line inputs for your turntable or your CDJ. We have a Bluetooth input to connect your smartphone or uh, your laptop. And uh, also we have, of course, for the channel insert, um, we have this channel insert modules uh, with isolators, equalizers. So we have a really broad range to choose from. Also linear faders or rotary faders for the DJs. And yeah, it's basically, it adapts to your needs and to your mixing style and that's the concept. Okay, and then I'll just pick it out from here, I believe, it's the, the Eurorack module. For everybody who loves like synthesizer, you want to combine it, you also got like a Eurorack module so you can build your synthesizer rig with your mixing stuff. And 
for me, that sounds like really interesting. Not that I'm even trying to be like a DJ mixer, but I think also like if you are like a um, more or synthesizer dude and you want to have like a mixing unit for it, it would be great to combine everything, I believe. Yeah, definitely. We are uh, also aiming at uh, the whole Eurek community because our uh, format is like the same as the Eurek modules. So we have these breakout modules and where you can get the signal to the top and come Combine it with your Eurek system, or you can put in Eurek modules directly into the mixer and use the effects, for example, or connect your uh, Eurek system directly to, into the mixer. Okay. Well, where can people find out more about it if they are like watching this video and like, okay, I want to show this, I want to see this? Yeah. Uh, of course, we're uh, on Instagram, uh, which is our main channel. We also have some YouTube videos, uh, but also there are uh, quite some uh, new reviews coming right now on YouTube, on magazines. And on our website, we have our uh, online configurator where you can directly configure the mixer and see what it looks like on the end. Okay. Well, Jasper, thank you very much. And I hope to see you around uh, next year or something uh, like that. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, Amanda. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing very well. Um, why are you standing here right now? We're in line to see Armin van Buren. I'm a trans girl, so of course, I want to learn from the best. <laughs> How about you? Um, I'm here to learn about stuff and about music and meet new people. That's my main thing uh, for today. Uh, but you are a big I'm a, I'm a fan? I'm a big trance fan. I'm also a producer and I'm signed with Cold Harbor Recordings and Black Hole. So I'm obsessed with trance. <laughs> it's my life. And you're doing well. You're already signed. It has taken a long time. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Well, I think you're great because I think most people here are wishing they could uh, be signed. Um, how was your experience for ADE this year? Was this your first time or second time? This is my first time and uh, it's been wonderful. I love Amsterdam. It's lovely. I would say if I, if, I, if I could recommend to others, definitely reserve everything in advance because I I had presumed that we could just get into things last minute. Not the case. You need to make reservations, plan everything a year before you get here. Don't wait till the last minute, but it's still really awesome. I mean, with those extra time slots that are available, you can have serendipitous meetings that just happen naturally. And that's some of the magic of being here because you're just surrounded by talented artists everywhere you look. And what was the best thing you have uh, done or met this, this edition? Or well, maybe a better question. Uh, no, that was the best thing you've done now. The best thing I've seen the, yet. The highlight of the, this year for you. Well, we just went over to MAPA for the uh, Reason presentation, which was really interesting. They did a live presentation with an interface that had over 50 different knobs. That, and I was, I was enthralled by that because I love turning knobs and pushing buttons, I think, like we all do. So uh, it really inspired me. But uh, haven't been to any of the shows yet. Might go to Marcus Schultz tonight, of course. He's the label owner of Cold Harbor, a longtime friend of mine. And uh, I also met with Black Hole, one of the ANRs, which you know, meant a lot to me because they just signed my tracks. So yeah, it's been really wonderful. And can we see you next year? I hope so. I hope that I'll be performing next year. So we'll see. Check will back. Will I get an invite if you're here next year? <laughs> of course you will. Of course. That's great. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So I am back again at my home and a little bit earlier than I would have laughed to. But the reason for that I will tell you in a moment. But First, I want to share with you the three main lessons I learned from visiting the ADE lab for the first time. And the first thing is be prepared because I just went in without any preparation, just go out there and see what you can do. But a lot of the most interesting stuff for that you had to make an appointment and to sign up in advance. And I didn't do that. And luckily I got like the magical crew bracelet. I could get into some stuff, but it is really a good idea to prepare and think in advance what you want to get from this event. Who would you like you to communicate with? Who would you like to meet? Which brands, which uh, record labels, would you like to meet and be really focused on that because it is so much information and it's really easy to get lost in that. And the second thing is just go and meet people. I just went alone and well, something I learned really fast, it is you are there with like-minded people. People. And yes, I know a lot of us, we are like the gear nerds and the guys who like to 
sit at home, tinkering with music, turning knobs and creating stuff and going out can be a little bit scared, especially when it comes to sharing things about art. But when you go there, you are with all kinds of people who are the same. They are all artists, all scared of what other people might think about the music, but you are there to share the passion for the music that you make and had a, such a great experience just talking to people meeting people and i must say yeah, a camera and a mic might help with this but um yeah for me it was a very pleasant experience and the third reason is also the reason why i'm already at home earlier than expected or planned um that's wear good shoes because uh, yesterday morning it was raining and my shoes weren't waterproof so I got some blisters so my feet really started to get hurting so I was like okay well maybe it's better to go home I would love to go to another party to meet some people but my body and especially my feet were telling me like no fairy you should go back home and go inside and sit down and edit this video so that's the reason why i am at home earlier than i might would have loved to um so overall it was a very pleasant experience and i hope i can get a full press pass for next year so i can make a better movie about it but yeah i really liked it and i also hope you liked this video and if so then please again give a thumbs up below and if you haven't subscribed yet subscribe to my channel help it grow so we can make more and better content see you soon in another video bye bye